Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today I've had a message from Paul on my Facebook page asking about the best types of ornamental grasses to use in a garden. Now I know a number of you are worried that ornamental grasses are going to take over and run them up through your gardens. So today I'm going to be giving you a video guide on my favourite ornamental grasses, whether you've got a small space or a large space, and giving you a whole heap of options that won't take over your garden and will allow you to grow grasses yourselves at home. So come on, let's go and have a look at some grasses. So people tend to worry that if you're going to start putting grasses in your borders, they'll take over, they'll swamp your other flowers. But it's not true. Now, I absolutely love grasses. I use them in an awful lot of my designs because you can get some great height from them. You get movement, you get winter interest if you leave them and then only prune them back in February. And I just think they're fantastic. And the first one on my hit list is this, and it's a penicetum. Now, this one is called Carly Rose. And if you can see, it's got a pink tinge to it. It's only a small grass, it doesn't really get much bigger than this, which is roughly around 60 centimetres. It's relatively hardy, and if you grow it somewhere in sort of full sun or dappled shade, you're going to get these beautiful red seed heads. Late summer, usually from July onwards, but these seed heads in my garden keep until about November, until they really start to crisp up. So if you want to start with a grass, start with the penicetum, because they look beautiful and they're really easy to grow. Now the next example is this beautiful Millennia behind me. Now this is Millennia Edith Dutz or Dutz. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce the second part of her name, but it's a purple moor grass. And if you look behind me, you'll see these dark purple flowers, seed heads. It's a little bit bigger than the Penicetum, but it's got a really dark green stem and leaf followed by the purple seed head here. So it's great for contrast and it jumps out of your borders. Again, it's really well behaved and all you've got to do is to cut it back either late autumn or early winter and it'll just keep going like this year after year after year. Now if you've only got a small garden and you're looking for something with big impact then look no further than this, the Steeper Tenuissima. You'll have seen this at show gardens, it's all over Gardener's World, Monty Don's been using it in his Paradise Garden and that's for good reason because this small grass has a huge impact. You've got the movement, you've got the texture of these lovely, almost like quasi hairy seed heads at the end, and it goes all the way through the season. It's semi evergreen, so again, I just take out some of the dead matter come February, but this will give you a really chilled out, relaxed, beachy vibe, wherever you put it in your garden. Now, another prime example of an amazing grass for a small garden is this, and it's a blue oak grass, also known as Halictotrichum, which is a bit of a mouthful, so I prefer blue oak grass. As you'll see here, you've got these amazing blue strappy-like leaves, and they're almost like a pastel blue, really vivid, and for such a small grass, it really jumps out of the border. You've also got these really thin seed heads here, which come from around about May all the way through to September. Great in a small space, really pops out of a border. So if I can cope with the sun melting my face off, over here we've got this, which is a Festuca Glauca, and this one's called Elijah Blue. And it's a little tiny evergreen grass, it's blue, and it's almost got like rolled leaves, it's beautiful. Great for pots, great for small gardens, and it's evergreen, so you don't need to do too much in terms of maintenance. All that I do with Festuca is every February I spend a good half an hour rubbing my fingers through, pulling out the dead leaves and bits of grass. But other than that, it's a real winner and looks amazing against things like this, the Eryngium, another bright blue plant. Now it wouldn't be a fair review if I didn't include one rogue, which is this. It's a Carex, not technically a grass, but it has the same look as a grass. And this is Carex Comans Bronze, not to be confused with Conan the Barbarian. And it's got this brown coppery colour, it's an evergreen so it keeps this form all year round. Again, all I do is run my fingers through it in the winter to pull out dead fronds. And this is quite a nice example, we've got this parasol here in the outdoor garden, sorry the outdoor room, and you can use things like this to disguise otherwise ugly bases here. So I'm using the Coman's bronze for both its year round cover and also to help cover the base of the parasol. Now the next specimen is slightly larger and it's a bit of a mouthful, it's a Deschampsia. It does sound like you're going to spit all over your face when you say it. But if you come down here, duh, 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 
I've got this Deschampsia here planted on mass. So there's about four or five and they do get quite big. These will get to probably 80 centimetres by a metre um, in diameter. But if you plant them on mass like this, you can see that, that hover fly really likes them. You can get a really good effect and it feels a little bit like cotton wool. I just love running my fingers through it. You get the noise, you get these oaty little seed heads here and loads of movement. The only niggle there with Deschampsia that I find is that if your soil's really fertile, it tends to send up loads of green stalks and growth and not many seed heads. And secondly, if it does that and it's exposed, like my garden, you can often end up with this, which is Deschampsia spread, where all the seed heads kind of get battered by the wind and fall to one side. But if it's sheltered and you've got full sun, then this is a beautiful specimen, even for a small garden, to give that height and that sound. So, what's next? And here it is behind me, we've got the Calamagrostis Carl Foster, often seen in show gardens. It's really tall, you get these beautiful like burnt oak seed heads here. Tall, as I said, it doesn't spread too much, it doesn't send out runners. If we look down here near the base, you'll see it's relatively compact, it's quite dense. Again, you've almost got these, I don't know, like pastel green leaves, not as matte as the millennia, um, but it's really well behaved. The only issue you will get is that if the wind batters it, you may find that some of these flower heads snap in half. They're not dead, but they will break at one of the nodes and then they hang down like this. The best thing to do, get your secateurs out, go right down to the base, cut them off and it will keep them looking neat. Once it's rained, they will also look a little bit worse for wear, but be patient and wait for them to come back. Don't go out as soon as it's finished raining and start cutting them off because they do tend to straighten themselves back up. Now, if you're looking for a bit more action and drama in your borders and you want to go up, 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 then a good idea is this millennia. Far taller than the Edith variety, and this one's Windschall, or Windschule. I think it might be German. But again, you've got this really tall, bright green stem, followed by the flower and then seed head. If you come down here with me, you'll see these beautiful, strappy, almost like matte green leaves. It will grow to about a metre wide, but you've got this height. I mean, look how tall that is. So we're going to move on to another tall specimen. Now, if you want a real bold statement piece, we've got this miscanthus, morning light behind us. There it is. Now, it puts on all of this silvery green foliage during the summer, and in about two weeks' time, in fact, there's already one there, and it's going to put on these huge white plumes. They're massive. They look a bit like pampas grass or like a bottle brush cleaner. Um, they go all the way through the winter. Now, they are big. This is only about three years old. It's going to get bigger again. Um, but you've got these huge seed heads. They'll probably come up to the same height as the silver birch back there, the multi-stem birch. Great if you want that impact. People do treat them a bit like an evergreen, but they're not. They're still deciduous. So I still cut this back every year. You could leave it to carry on for the next year, but what you tend to find with grasses is if you do that, you'll get loads of congestion and all the growth gets knotted together and you start to look really tatty. And we don't really want that. So I leave them throughout the winter and then hack them back. Now, if you want the big daddy of all grasses, we're going to walk up to the top of the exploding atom garden and I'm going to show you the biggest, most gigantic grass that I grow. Steeper Gigantea. It's a whopper. You've got these huge, huge, huge seed heads. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks like a field of wheat. And then you've got this crown down here, which again is like this silvery green foliage. They're really sharp, so wear gloves because you can find yourself with loads of little paper cuts if you're not careful. This will probably get another 50 centimetres wide by next year. With Steeper Gigantea, you need to treat it a semi evergreen so what I do is at the end of the season which for me is February this is a good example I will snip off all these seed heads back down to the base but I will leave all of this green foliage I only take off what's dead or what's crisped up if you cut it right back it takes a long time a couple of years then to put that growth back on and start to send up seed heads so you want all the energy in these beautiful seed heads So there we have it, my whistle stop tour of my favourite grasses. And all the specimens that I've shown you today are well behaved. They're not going to run, they're not going to take over your garden, they're not going to behave like a badly behaved bamboo. So why not give grasses a try? 
they will take your garden throughout the winter months and although they're not as blousy and as vigorous as other herbaceous perennials they can add that delicacy and that texture that a lot of gardens miss. If you like this video why not subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are loads more garden design hints, tips and hacks and guides from me the Garden Ninja. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notified of future videos. If you've got a question like Paul's question on grasses, why not get in touch in the comments below on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the usual suspects and ask me the Garden Ninja and I will do my best to get back to you and create some content that will help you the gardener. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening.